Hi guys, this is Amar and welcome to Network Engineer Stuff. So guys, in this video, we are going to focus on understanding of default static and floating static routing, which is very interesting in this video. So default routing. Uh, so basically, we will see the differences between these three kind of routings and then we'll see the practical implementation of this uh, three routing. Uh, we'll do a lab small lab and we'll, tr we'll we'll try to make the topic more clear so default routing many of my subscribers i know they know what is default routing but still default routing is a method used by routers to forward packet when there is no specific route entry in the routing table for the destination network so let's say i have a router and this router R1 this router uh, you know have its routing table it have many routes in the routing table and uh, this from this router we have to send some uh, some 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 traffic some packet to this network 10.1.1.1 uh, slash 32 and this network uh, you know the entry is not present in this routing table there is no entry in the routing table so when whenever there is no entry in the routing table that router will actually follow default route so whatever default route is configured in that router so this packets will not be dropped the packets which are destined to 10.1.1.1 will not be dropped they will be routed to the next hop which is defined in the default routing so let's say uh, this router have uh, many interfaces. Uh, you know, let's say this is a this is interface serial one slash one. This is interface serial one slash two. You know, so these have many interfaces. So my IP address configure on that. So uh, let's say that the default route is uh, is just pointing the packets to be on S serial one slash two. So this particular destination 10.1.1.1 do not have any rou specific route in the routing table so it will take uh, it will follow the path which is defined in a default gateway which is serial 1 slash 2 so whatever the ip address or whatever the interface is there that will be defined in the default route so this is simple as it is it is also known as gateway of last resort if you go in the cisco routers you will do find this thing the gateway of the last resort so uh, this is a default routing the other routing is static routing static routing is where uh, let's say the same network we have 10.1.1.1 uh, slash 32 so we will define some uh, we, will, we will define some uh, next stop for that so basically the command will be like you know ip route uh, 10.1.1.1 then this is 255.255 because it is slash 32.255.255 followed by the next hop so whatever the next hop is either an interface or an IP address so that next hop will be defined so it will have that particular uh, for that particular destination it will have the next stop defined so this is static routing and this is something which the network administrator have to manually configure so it is recommended and it is not feasible also to configure it in large network so whenever you have large network you will see that people go for dynamic routing protocols you know something known as dynamic routing protocols which uh, which involves uh, ospf vigrp bgp you know that kind of routing protocols so which provides a lot of flexibility in case of large network but as i've written here in small networks this particular method static routing is very it's it's very efficient simply because it is very simple to configure there's nothing uh, difficult to configure in this static routing so this is all about static routing so guys what is floating static routing what exactly floating static routing is uh, floating static routing looks like ip static routing only because it's a it's a type of you can say static routing like uh, in, the, in the last uh, slide i show you that this is the command for static routing show ip route let's say this is the destination the, the destination network like 10.1.1.1 we had and uh, followed by the 
uh, next hop so this is something we have in uh, static routing this is a format we have in static routing so in floating static routing we will have a format similar format ip route we will have same command uh, the destination uh, network and the next hop the destination the next hop and here there's some ad value will be defined this is an extra configuration in floating static route because it will have something ad value it will have some some ad value which will be again uh, greater than one because ad value of static routing is one it will be greater than one because because floating static routing is basically used whenever you need a backup to a static routing so i'll explain you i also first of all i've mentioned this slide also that this is a backup solution in case the primary connection to the network goes down so the floating static net uh, static routing is a technique which is used to provide a backup or a secondary route in the case the primary route is not available so i'll try to explain you with this particular lab only this particular example only why we need full take floating static route now let's say um, uh, we are on this router r1 and from r1 uh, to reach this destination 100.1.1.1 we have this two route from this route we have to reach this network right to reach this network and we have this route also okay this route this particular route so we have two routes one is uh, primary route and the other is secondary route and we are using static routing okay so you know we configured some static routing over here on r1 to reach this uh, network trend dot oh, sorry 100 dot 1 dot 1 dot 1 uh, and the next hop will be this 13 dot 1 dot 1 dot 3 <coughs> now we uh, want like in case this particular route goes down we want the secondary route to be installed in the routing table how it is possible because we have configured one static route we cannot configure like if you configure two static routing that will be something known as load balancing and that will will, will happen but but we want at the time only this particular route should be taken like the primary route and in case failure of this route then the secondary route should be taken in the routing table so for that we will configure another static route but a floating static route which will have some ad value here like you can see over here so once we configure this particular value that is 5 this is this is my ad value you can see it is similar to the uh, static routing only here is our static routing it is similar to that ip route then the destination uh, network and followed by the next stop so here for the primary route the next stop is 13.1.1.3 and here we can see for secondary route the uh, next stop is 14.1.1.4 so the, the same command everything is same only this ad value is extra because it is acting as a secondary route so whenever we speak whenever we talk about secondary route in our network perspective it means a, it is a backup to the primary route it's not having multiple routes so primary and then if in case the primary goes down it will go into secondary and this is very important to understand from not only uh, from this video's perspective but overall in networking uh, terms whenever we talk about secondary route so we'll do this lab i've already configured the ip address stuff just to save our time so we will end show over here and uh, we will keep this because in case we want to refer it so i have uh, my router r1 over here so this is our router r1 and mm -hmm. and what we'll do is we'll start configuring it right away the, st the static routing will configure it so how to check the routing table the command is show ip route and you will see that uh, it will be having only directly connected routes it is not having i'm trying to just adjust it okay so give me a minute i'll just adjust my window here
okay so you can see in the routing table of router r1 we have only directly connected routes there's no static routes configured the other command to check static route configuration is show show run pipe include ip route so we will see that uh, there is no ip route which is configured so let's first configure uh, uh, a default route so here in this case what i am doing guys is i am configuring a default route uh, towards uh, this particular line that is from r1 to r2 so this is my default route so let's first configure the default route we're going to configure terminal the command to configure the default route is ip route 0 .0 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 then followed by the next hop next hop will be 12.1.1.2 so this particular is my uh, default route so if if any destination uh, do not have a route uh, network do not have a route in the routing table of this router it will follow this particular path. We'll also check this. We'll also verify this. So this is my default route. So let's configure a static route now. Static route to reach 100.1.1.1.255 since it is 220. It's just it's 24. So it will be 255.255.255.0 .255 followed by the next stop. So the next stop is 12.1. Sorry. 13.1.1.3 so this is my static route i think so i made a mistake hundred dot one dot one dot one okay so where did i made a mistake is this one i might have mentioned since i'm mentioning it as slash 24 i have to mention only the network for this three three first octet and the other the fourth octet will be zero okay so another learning for us guys and so this is uh, our static route now we will configure the something known as floating static route so let's configure it 100.1.1.0 255.255.255.0 uh, next stop will be 14.1.1.4 followed by here we have see the option distance metric for this route so let's give it as 5 so this is our configuration done for default static and floating static route now let's check the routing table so ip route now you can see first of all the default route as i told you the gateway of the last resort is 12.1.1.2 so that is default route Static route you can see over here it is marked with S. So this is my static route and you can see it is 100.1.1.0 for that it is 13.1.1.3 that this one this primary route which we discussed. Uh, you will not see the secondary route in the routing table because the primary route is present. And why primary route is present because it is having the AD value the default AD value of static route is 1 whereas for floating static route we have manually configured the ad value 5 so one is lesser so that is the reason why this route is present that is uh, the route with 13.1.1.3 next stop that is present so first we will check uh, by just we will we'll just shut down this particular primary link so what i'll do is i'll go in the configuration and i'll just shut down interface serial one slash one correct i'll do shut once i do this shut and now you will see this is this this interface has got down so that means the reachability to 13.1.1.3 is gone down so that route is uninstalled from the routing table you can see over here show ip route see that 13.1.1.3 is disappeared You can see over here earlier in our routing table the route was next up was 13.1.3 which was having an ad value of 1 and now you can see the route is changed it is 14.1.1.4 
and the ad value is 5 which we configure so let's ping let's check the reachability so we'll ping it 100.1.1.1 .1 you can see we are able to ping it good and let's say the trace also 100.1.1.1 .1. you can see the trace also guys that this trace is going via 14.1.1.4 and then 45 that is the r fair router so basically it is traveling from r1 to r4 and from r4 to r5 to the server so basically we just uh, just just cut cut down this particular interface that is this link and due to which the traffic is shifted the routing is shifted to the secondary part so let's bring this up again so interface serial 1 slash 1 and we'll do no shut so we made that particular link up again and now we will check our so the interface is up show ip route and now we will see that for the 100.1.1.0 again that primary route has come up that is that that, that, that is via 13.1.1.3 if you want to ping we can also see ping 100.1.1.1 .1 it is able to ping it let's check the trace route 100.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1. One. you can see here the path is now the first hop is 13.1.1.3 that is from r1 it is r3 and then 35.1.1.5 which is r5 and then from r5 to the server 100.1.1.1 so it is as simple as that so i hope that you know this will this will make some clarity give some clarity to you guys guys that what is uh, static routing and what is floating static routing why it is used so this is a practical implementation of that now default route you know let's say now i have this routing table so this is my routing table guys and you can see there's some routes present so let's say we do not have a route to reach uh in this particular routing table we do not have a route to reach 1.1.1.1 this is some network which is not which which we don't have a route from this particular network now if i trace because we want to check that which path it is following so if i trace 1.1.1.1 you'll find that it is following 12.1.1.2 which is my default gateway so whatever route whatever uh, route whatever destinations which are not having any route in the routing table the default route will be 12.1.1.2 because you can see the first stop is 12.1.1.2 here also the the gateway of the last, last resort is 12.1.1.2 so this is very simple default routing is very simple but the intention to make this particular video was to make you understand that what is a small difference is there between default between static route and the floating static route and what is the practical implementation of that so guys i hope that um, you know this video you find this video a bit useful video uh, i do have uh, if you want this lab i can share with you this is a this is a lab which is made with gns3 so if you want this lab i can share with you guys you just comment to me uh, on this particular video i'll uh, I'll give you the uh, lab as well of this video also i have notes made for this video on my blog spot uh, that is uh, network engineer stuff dot blogspot dot com you can find the notes on that blogs also i have any queries related to this particular topic you can write in the comment section or you can email me to network engineer stuff at the rate gmail.com so i'll stop here guys hope you enjoyed this video Thanks for your time. Thank you.